If you watch to the end, I've got some extra footage. I'll show you why this work uh, can be really dangerous and why you really have to pay attention uh, and why it's probably not a good idea to uh, film while you're working a piece of machinery like this. So stick around for that and remember that you always have to be on guard and safety comes first whenever you're working around a piece of machinery like this. So today is a bittersweet day in the shop. I have two blondes in my life and uh, I've recently outgrown one of them. So the two blondes in my life are my wife and, uh, and my first lady. Uh, this is a uh, the blonde lady and uh, I think I'll keep my wife around a while. She's been pretty good to me. Although this lady has been good to me as well. Uh, I've outgrown it and I need to upgrade and get something a little bit bigger. Uh, but before I, uh, before I get rid of it, I thought I'd take the time to make a video about it. Uh, for anybody that's out there that's wanting to purchase a first lathe, I would highly recommend uh, the LeBlanc brand. And these are really, these are highly sought after because of the industrial build of this lathe. Uh, in, a, in a small package that could easily fit into a garage. Um, so typically whenever you find, when you're looking for a lathe, you either have to go really big to find something that's really industrial and is going to last you a lifetime. Uh, if you go very small, it may not be as strong and as durable uh, as accurate. And, uh, and so that's the balance you have to play whenever you're looking for a lathe. But a LeBlanc uh, kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Uh, so I'll walk you through uh, what this one does and the handles and what they do. Uh, I'm not an expert machinist, but I know my way around uh, machinery pretty well, well enough to get uh, some work out of it. So one thing about this lathe in particular, what kind of set this lathe apart from others was this hydraulic shift. Uh, and on this model, the, uh, the selector uh, is not functional. So the way that it works is that uh, you would, instead of turning the lathe off, you would put it in a neutral position. You would select the speed that you want, and while it was in a neutral position, this chuck would, would rock back and forth like this. There's a hydraulic motor uh, that would then engage and engage the speed that you selected. Once it, was, once it was selected, you could then turn the lathe on, and it would run at the speed that you selected. So, Pretty useful, it could save some time. What it was really good for was saving the wear and tear on the gearbox uh, versus the manual style where you would have handles and you have to select the gear that you want and the speed that you want. And what happens is a lot of times people, they're, they're in a hurry and they don't wait uh, for the chuck to stop spinning and for the gearbox to stop rotating. And whenever they go to turn a handle, that would cause those gears to grind. And so over years of doing that, you get the wear and tear in the gearbox, uh, and then you gotta go and do some, some pretty extensive work to get that lathe functional again. Uh, this uh, style was good about not allowing that to happen and about uh, giving you the ability to switch speeds quickly um, without turning the machine off. So why is this one not functional? After doing a lot of research, what I found was that uh, there is a switch that these came with from the manufacturer that used mercury uh, in the switch to make that connection. Uh, with, the, with that switch using mercury, they, they have since stopped producing it, and so it's very hard to find one of those switches. They do have an alternative, but it is a very expensive alternative to that switch. Uh, so what some guys will do is they will actually go in here and uh, take this panel off and build uh, manually, they'll build the manual handles to shift this manually. If you do find one that is functional, uh, consider yourself uh, pretty lucky, but uh, uh, it's probably just a matter of time before that switch goes bad and you're in the same situation. 
but that doesn't make it inoperable. So simply to, uh, to change the speed on this, there's a linkage that's behind this plate. And so when you take the cover off, you can just manually uh, adjust the speed uh, from the linkage that's inside here. So still completely usable. Some people will even go in here and make uh, handles and fabricate a plate for this to, to turn this into a manual machine. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, exactly what it does, how it works. Now I'm not an expert machinist and I don't know all the names and references and parts of lathe. I know what they do and I know how to use them. If you want to learn proper terminology, I would suggest watching Tuple Kane's channel. That's Mr. Pete 222. Uh, he, uh, he's actually a machinist teacher and whenever he talks about something, he knows exactly uh, the reference, what it is, what it does. He, uh, he probably even knows why it was built when it was built. If you really want in-depth information on a lathe, uh, but, uh, but I don't have that type of knowledge, so I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what this one can do. So here's the power switch. And this is how we turn it on. This is the forward and the reverse. There's also another handle over here. Uh, this handle's broken off, uh, but you can also do the forward and the reverse from this side. And there's a guard plate right over here, and this is how you would do the reverse. This right here is where you would change the feed. So what this does is this changes the feed. Uh, if you're cutting threads, this will determine the, pit, the thread pitch that you would be cutting. And there's a, a data plate right here that tells you uh, the type of threads that, uh, that tells you the position this needs to be in to cut the thread that you want. Again, this is the forward and reverse. We've got this safety cover right here. And if you want to go in reverse, you have to lift this cover. And then you can put it in reverse. Here's the data plate for cutting your threads and this is where you adjust uh, the thread pitch that you want to cut. This handle will reverse your feed. So when I turn this on and I engage the half nut, I'm feeding forward.
So now that the chuck has stopped rotating, I will reverse feed this. Turn it back on. And now whenever I engage the half nut, feeding backwards. Now whenever I engage this one, I'm also feeding the other direction on the cross slide. back cover off of this one so that you can see the internal workings so that you can see the, the gears and the movements I don't recommend uh, doing this or running this very long because uh, it is pretty dangerous you wouldn't want to get your fingers stuck in there This is an Allure's tool post. It's a quick change uh, tool post. These things are really handy. I would recommend uh, getting this style. So why this is so useful is because you can quickly change out your tooling uh, with just this handle here. Uh, that handle will disengage this tool holder and you can pop it off. You can change the direction of the tool or you can change the tooling uh, itself completely with a different insert. And you can see this little, this little wedge right here is the mechanism uh, that locks it in place. You can see that this wedge will uh, slide down, creating uh, friction against the tool holder. I chucked up a piece of bar stock here. So I thought to, uh, to say goodbye, we'd get one last cut on her.
pinhole to the, to the front of this bar, so it's going to have an interrupted cut as it comes to that pinhole. Here's the last cut on our LeBlanc lathe. And there it is. She's been good to me. Now on to the next one. So what happened was, remember I told you that there's two ways to engage the feed here. Uh, you've got this lever, uh, which will engage the feed, and you've got the half nut, uh, which will also engage the feed. So what happened was, while I was filming, I lost focus on, uh, on the actual part in these two handles. And when I went to shut it off, when I pushed this down, uh, it didn't stop the feed what I didn't realize was that the half nut was actually engaged and so that's why you have to be uh, you have to pay very close attention to what you're doing these two handles they're close together you can easily mistake one for the other uh, and so that's why I dropped the phone I turned the machine off uh, and then after that I realized the mistake that I made and that I didn't disengage the half nut I was disengaging the wrong lever so lessons learned uh, don't film while you machine and uh, I will make that correction and just want everybody to be aware of how dangerous uh, this machinery can be and how careful uh, you have to be whenever you're working it.